I'm Priya Rajkopalan. So I'm the chief product officer of a company called Four Kites. And so from, from gaming to freight. So who is Four Kites? Uh, so we are uh, in the business of uh, supply chain visibility. So if you think about, you know, uh, a Pokemon toy, right, that, that I might buy on Amazon for my kid. Well, now Amazon has gotten so good that you literally will receive updates, right, would say, hey, this, this, this package is now four stops away, three stops away. So it gets as granular as you can possibly imagine it. And yet, if you think about some of the companies represented here, uh, right, their, their transportation spend, literally annual transportation spend is in the billions of dollars. And yet surprisingly, so if I'm Procter & Gamble and I'm sending a half a million uh, order of freight uh, to say Walmart, surprisingly the best that usually you can do for Walmart is to say, hey, I'm going to get there on, uh, you know, November 1st, and that's about it, right? That's, that's about the granularity that the industry is used to today. Uh, and so that, that is pretty much par for the course. And so that was the vision with which Four Kites was founded. So we are uh, certainly the youngest company represented here today and also the youngest community. So the company is just uh, under six years old. We were founded late 2014. And uh, we're, C we're a Series C startup. So Bain Capital is our, BCV, Bain Capital Ventures is our largest investor. Uh, we've grown fairly quickly. I joined the company in uh, 2016. We were about 30 people, so we've grown fairly quickly. Uh, and we have, you know, you can see some numbers there, but the most important thing to remember is just that our shippers, uh, you know, the community and when I refer to shippers, I'm talking really about transportation and warehousing professionals uh, that work at these types of companies, right? Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Land Lake, Unilever, we have very heavy presence in CPG and food, uh, and also in some of the uh, more uh, industrial firms like Caterpillar, Ingersoll, Rand, and so on. But many of these are common shippers and receivers, right? Meaning, uh, you know, if you're Meyer, your top 20 suppliers are gonna be the guys you see here and they're all represented on the Four Kites community. And so uh, when we set out to uh, create this community, it, this is important to remember when you think about, you know, when I was just listening to, to the two presentations earlier, right? And these are not, you know, developers or even folks necessarily that are used to engaging in community. So these are supply chain professionals uh, most of them spend most of their time either in the warehouse or just literally talking to uh, talking to carriers, right? They're focused on transportation. And so I think internally, um, it was a bit of a gamble, right? There was quite a bit of skepticism around, uh, can we actually engage this community? Will they take the time to, to engage with each other and with four kites? Uh, and so uh, we launched the community in September, 2019. I'm happy to say sort of fast, fast forwarding to the end that, uh, you know, the community has certainly blown away uh, our, our expectations just in terms of the engagement, uh, in terms of just how actively uh, they've been participating, right? They've been soliciting each other to join the community. And so there's a number of uh, positive things that have resulted uh, thanks to that. So it's young, it's just about exactly about a year old at this point. Our primary goals were that we um, we wanted to get the community talking to each other to be able to uh, supply chain. There's there's no such thing as 100% visibility uh, when it comes to supply chain, and so we wanted shippers to be able to share, uh, importantly, share ideas with each other of what they had done, different ways to get around uh, some of the thorniest problems in supply chain. And obviously, we, we were hoping also to have a more scalable process to gather and systematize, uh, systematically prioritize customer feedback. So those were the objectives with which we launched the community. And the way I've structured the rest of the presentation is simply because, you know, a year ago, this was, or, you know, 15 months ago, this was me. And so uh, I don't know how many of you are in the audience are uh, perhaps looking to start your own community or certainly scale it up, especially if you're on the B2B side. Uh, you know, I've structured it in terms of the my learnings, right, and the things that uh, I, I hope might be beneficial. So there were five uh, five ways, really, and so what I've done is to synthesize that into the top five things 
uh, that we did. So the my recommendations would be number one, uh, you know, start with a dedicated leader, and I'll talk about why that's important. Second, pick the right technology for your community. Uh, third, again, th these are all obviously B two B centric, but you know, start small, identify your champions. We discovered surprisingly, this was one of our surprises. Gamification does work. Uh, people, our customers, especially, we also discovered love polls. So we have this concept of Friday polls, which has gone uh, gone down very well. And finally, um, measurement is key. So I'll speak briefly to each of these. Right. So the first one, uh, you know, Megan Itoven is actually on this call. So she is my product leader, and we literally created a rec and hired her. Uh, to run the community. She came to us with the experience of having built a community. And I think this has been a big part of why we were successful, right? Uh, unlike everyone else on my team who is perhaps spread 10 different ways, right? Megan was someone that we did focus uh, uh, to, to just deliver on this. And Megan's incentives are again, uh, very closely aligned with the community success metrics that we were shooting for. And then, you know, in my team of uh, 40 uh, pro product managers and designers, Megan does report to me. And the reason for that, again, was we wanted to make sure that it stayed elevated within the org. Uh, so I think, and I start here because that is really the most important piece in my view and a big part of why, uh, why we were successful. Second, the right technology. We, um, for us, it was important to have the uh, common tool for our uh, KB and community. And so, uh, we looked at a bunch of different vendors. We did a pretty robust evaluation. We picked Salesforce, and there's lots of reasons. But importantly, you can see a, a, a screenshot of the app here. One of the things that we did was to embed it right here within uh, the application itself. And so right from within the Forkites experience, at any point, you can launch the community. And uh, we think that that, that again, has uh, made a difference uh, for us. Uh, number three. Right, so we started small, we also started early. So fundamentally, it of course all begins with customer intimacy. And so this is, you know, we, we now have maybe about 380 shippers on the platform, but um, you know, they, they do feel part of a community and we had some very engaged customers. So we started with about 20 to 30 of the most tech forward customer champions, because again, our community is not based on, on developers or product managers, uh, you know, or folks that uh, necessarily are the most, uh, let's just say, tech savvy. And so it was pretty important for us to identify those just to get the momentum going. And when you think about the number, you need at least that number in order to make sure that if someone tosses an idea out, there'll be enough people that will pick up and run with it. And that's, uh, you know, that's how we wanted to get it going. Uh, we have an annual customer conference visibility, which happens every year, or certainly for the last three years, we're young. And so, uh, you know, at our customer conference, by the time we got to the customer conference in just about a month, uh, we were a little delayed with launch, but, you know, we had just about a month to go and we had over 100 ideas by that time. This was last year, so the conference was actually uh, not a virtual event, but we had uh, these customer, you know, these, these, 20 to 30 folks identified as community champions. They had special badges, which they wore with pride and they were talking up and evangelizing the community as well, uh, which all helped with gaining momentum. Uh, number four, you know, one of the things we learned was that two things that really helped were, one was gamification. So we have various levels within the app, right? The more engagement you have, obviously um, your, uh, there is gamification around your status, right? Uh, and that's that's sort of tied to uh, tied to the product. And then the other uh, thing that we did was around polling itself. So every Friday, our UX team posts a poll. We've discovered that our community loves polls, whether it is just commenting on uh, a specific, literally like, hey, which logo should we pick for air, air freight? Or uh, if it's more, uh, you know, more deep feedback around the notifications format or whatever the case may be, um, there is a, we do see engagement go up on Fridays. Uh, folks love to participate in these polls. And then the most important piece I would say is that uh, within our uh, seven product lines, uh, every one of the team that works on those product lines has a two-day SLA. 
So that is a pretty important one that they are expected to honor, to respond to the actual community ideas, because I'm a firm believer in this is where you know, communities go to die, right? You, you stop responding and that's, that's pretty much the, the beginning of the end. And so this is something that's really important. I'm personally very active in the community. And so uh, our PM team, uh, that, that's the, they, they are in fact measured on this. Uh, finally, measurement. So we measure everything related to the community, right? Just to give you some sense, we are constantly looking at the number of new ideas, uh, response times, right? Whichever ideas have gone by without an actual status change, uh, monthly active users, we define that as somebody that is logging into the community one or more times a week. Uh, and then we also, you know, every, every quarter in the roadmap, we look at, uh, you know, the, the community ideas and we prioritize them based on the top upvoted ones. I think our, uh, you know, just this last month, we had one that uh, literally got over 300 points because so many customers, every customer, you know, every upvote gets 10 points. And so we had so many customers upvoted and we immediately within 24 hours changed the status to on roadmap. Uh, which made a big difference. And we've heard customers often comment on how they feel that the community is the fastest way to get their ideas on the roadmap. Uh, so that that has itself uh, formed a nice, uh, a nice loop for us. And then this is something that we measure on and we're very transparent. We report to the entire company. What is the percentage of community ideas that actually uh, make it to our monthly roadmap? We report on that, you know, Megan sends out uh, an update once a month to the, you know, to the to the entire company. I'll show you uh, just a couple of screenshots uh, so you get an idea of what that uh, of what this looks like. These are the Friday polls that I was mentioning over here on the right is where uh, customers can come in and uh, come in and vote on different polls. A and then within each of these, there are subgroups as well. So if somebody is, for example, a huge ocean shipper, they can connect with other ocean shippers and uh, you know share ideas each of these we have specific sub communities along with quarterly forums that we host where we preview our roadmap and get feedback uh, so there's a lot of interaction that gets and somebody can elect to join one or more of these groups and so there's there's a lot of interaction that we have fostered around these communities uh, here's an example of one of our more popular ideas right this is one of our customers uh, and then you can see that it it gathered 180 points, right? It was upvoted, and then immediately we changed the status to on roadmap to reflect that this now goes to the top of our list. And we typically deliver it, you know, depending on the complexity, usually within between one to three months. That is all I had. What uh, what questions can I answer? This was amazing. Thank you so much. I'm inspired. Beautiful. Um, so we have, um, when it comes to community, we have um, a, a crowd that is very engaged on Facebook. And I'm, I'm concerned a little bit about creating my own, like I, I want to build something in our own platform, in our own app, the software for our service providers, our network. And um, I'm curious, what do you think when it comes to choosing the right technology? Should I just like double down on Facebook and maintain the um, the network over there and the community over there, or should I really go ahead and try to migrate them into my into my own community and my own technology? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, right? Just I I I, I don't know the your um, your application, right? Do you feel like new customers will easily find? It depends in a sense on your goals and how important it is, right? That that be integrated with other pieces. Like for us, I think there were two things that were important, right? One was, you know, if we kept it outside our application, we considered Slack as an example, because I was inspired by Pendo. For those of you that use it, their community is super active on Pendo, but then very quickly I realized that transportation managers are not product managers. And so, you know, keeping it anywhere outside of the application would lower my chances of, uh, you know, getting enough adoption. So that was important. Uh, the other piece is also just the knowledge base, right? It is a fairly deep application. And so just being able to quickly point them to 
uh, just the right articles within the knowledge base and have that seamless interaction back and forth was also very important to us. So that's that's really the reason we kept it. But for you, if those are not considerations, then I think you could take advantage. For instance, if you're more concerned about just a product, gathering product input, running your surveys, you can do all of those things on pretty much any technology platform. Uh, and if Facebook is the easiest way to do it because you have enough momentum there, then you know you should just go for it. Yeah. How how um, does any of you have experience with building a community on one platform and then transition into a different one? I don't. No. Okay. Looks like Chris Top is uh, nodding his head. Yes. Uh, yes, we did. We had uh, used like ready products like Telligent and others. I can't even remember. Then we migrated to WordPress and now we are native in our own product. So it's been in two years increment. Um, always with some changes, but in the end of the day, I see community as a product. So I think it's part of our core product. It's not a marketing add on. Um, and it's deeply ingrained, like in every aspect of our product. So if you have a badge, it will show everywhere in the product. So, uh, and it, it surfaces because the surfacing of these badges that makes people click through back to, wait, how do I get a badge and so on? And if that lives outside your product, you kind of just don't have the same level of, of ingrainment, if you will. I don't know what, whether that's a word, but uh, I think you know what I, what I try to say. Yeah, thank Nicole, you so much. Nicole, did you, you raise your yeah. hand? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I have experience in navigating Facebook communities over to our app that we built, which is a live shopping app. Um, and then having our vendors that are selling on the platform do the same and how we kind of set up some community standards so that even the other people that are bringing their communities are kind of forming one larger community and I'd be happy to like chat more with you about it sometime. I would definitely okay. want to take you on that. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Please. Thank you. Yeah. We had, uh, I, I sent out sort of the, both the faces directory and then sort of the groupings, the groupings have emails. Um, so uh, everybody will be able to get in touch with everybody else uh, after the event. Okay. We have time for one more question. Um, I know Gabe raised his hand, but Gabe, I know you already asked a question. So I don't know if anybody else has a burning question. Otherwise, we'll call on Gabe. Okay, Gabe, take it away. Uh, beautiful presentation. Um, question in terms of ideas that don't line up either with the company vision or just completely unfeasible of, you know, do this thing that's completely impossible. Um, how do you manage the uh, just expectation setting and just making sure that those, those community members aren't like, well, you said you'd do it, but you're not doing it? Oh, we have a pretty clear uh, status. So the different status options, uh, and so those would simply fall into not planned. So we just simply change the status there to not planned. You know, we have a stat progressive status that starts from under consideration uh, to you know on roadmap, and then if it's just something that's completely, uh, completely not not in scope, it's a great question. Uh, we, we just turn it to, we just switch it to not planned. And Does that have that. consequences or do people like, okay, I get it? Um, I think for the most part, I mean, I don't know that, uh, <laughs> you know, I think for the most part, so it's interesting you say that because I think our shipper community, so I talked about the shipper community, the newest community we've launched is the carrier community. So for us, when you think about it, you know, we sell to shippers, that's, that's our business model. We make money from the PNGs or the Unilevers of the world, but we rely on carriers for the data, right, who are transporting the freight. And so uh, we also launched a carrier community just maybe about two months back. Uh, is it two months, Megan? Yeah, so about two months back. And there we can definitely see that people are not as understanding, right? They, we get all kinds of requests from, you know, make sure that my driver's cell phone is always set to track always. And it's like, we, we try and explain, hey, that's, that's actually not something we can do, right? We can't physically mess with someone's device. Um, and then, you know, so they're always not so understanding. So uh, I think with, carrier, with the carrier community, we're gonna have to learn to find our way a little bit. Uh, 
you know, they're, they're always not as, but at least on the shipper side, it's pretty clear. Uh, and I think our plan there with the carrier community, what we plan to do is to have similarly roundtables just to educate them on the process and what we can and cannot do.